Welcome back to my series on making your strumming more interesting. If you've been playing guitar for a while, then you may run into the beginner strumming trap, which is the point where you've got a few strumming patterns you can play, but they all pretty much sound the same, and you don't really know what to do to get beyond that same old one, two, and three, four strumming pattern and make your strumming actually more interesting. So that's exactly what I'm covering in this series, is how to make your strumming cleaner, easier, and far more interesting so you can become an intermediate level strummer. This is the second video in this series. In the first video, I covered my top must-know tips to make your strumming easier, cleaner, and more interesting. So if you haven't watched that, you can check it out in the link in the description of this video. Watch that first and then come back to this video. In this video, I'm gonna go over two really cool, unique techniques that you can apply to all the strumming patterns that you already know, but it'll make them instantly a lot more interesting. So let's get into it with technique number one, which is slaps. All right, so the first technique we're gonna go over today is a slap. So a slap adds a more rhythmic element to your playing, kind of like a drum beat. So you can kind of play a drum beat along with your strumming. So what is a slap? It's basically a mute of the strings and then just playing the muted strings, but it adds a very percussive feel to it. So you can add slaps really anywhere in your playing when you would be strumming instead. But one thing to keep in mind is that the most common places you're gonna put them are on beats two and four because the slap sounds a lot like a snare drum and the snare drum we're used to hearing in music on beats two and four. So if you just mostly stick to two and four on that, then it's gonna sound nice and it's gonna sound intentional. So as a simple example, I'm just gonna be switching between a G and an A minor chord on a kind of swing bluesy kind of rhythm. And on beats two and four, I'm gonna add in the slap. little bit slower. So you can see right there, all I'm doing is taking the side of my palm resting it completely over all the strings, and then just playing to get this nice clicky sound. That doesn't sound like much on its own, but it sounds pretty cool when you add it into the actual strumming pattern. All right, so try that out, and then once you're more comfortable with it, what you can do to add variation to it is vary the power, basically the loudness of your slap, based on what you're trying to go for with the strumming pattern. So here's two examples of a strumming pattern, exactly the same as we were doing before. But first off, I'll do it with a high energy loud slap, and that's for again, a high energy, a loud thing where you want it to be very rhythmic and you want it to be really groovy. So here's the first example. And so here's how you can change it to be a lot more subtle, maybe for a verse or something a little quieter, lower energy where you don't need to be as big and grand to bolt. You can see how that's for kind of just a lower energy, calmer version of this, but you still get that kind of rhythmic feel but it's more about the actual stopping of the chord than the distinctive ch sound. Versus when you have something higher energy and you want that, that full ch, 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 decide whether you want it to be high energy, full and full of life, or whether you're going for something subtler and gentler. And then you play and adjust your playing based on the energy that you're going for, instead of just playing everything at the same volume, always the exact same. And that right there is how you'll add a lot more dynamic and interest to your playing. All right, so here's a strumming pattern that you can use to practice this. So our previous one was a more bluesy feel to it. This one we're gonna go for a more straight kind of feel. And the chords I'm going to use are gonna be A minor to C to E minor and then to D minor. So the strumming pattern I'm gonna be playing is gonna be down, up, slap, up, down, up, slap, up. Down, up, slap, up down, up, slap, up. 
So you're gonna practice that on its own, on your one chord, on your A minor until you're kind of smooth with it. And then you can add in our full chord progression and it's gonna sound like this. So you can try that and practice it a little bit slower. It'll be more like this when you're first starting and you can work up to the fuller speed. So try that out. That'll probably be tricky to do to start. But once you get the hang of this technique, it's great. And you can see how you can just plop it into literally any strumming pattern that you already play. And it'll add a much more rhythmic feel, which can really boost the energy of a section or just make it a lot groovier to play along to. Now, if you are still struggling with your chord changes, getting them smooth and clean from one to another, these techniques are gonna be really tough. So what you should do instead is go first start with my 14 day chord challenge. Link's gonna be in the description below this video. It's gonna be 14 days of step-by-step -step lessons to guide you to clean, smooth, fast chords every time. So check that out, link in the description below. Go through that and then come back and this video will be a lot easier to do and you'll sound a lot better and your strumming will be a lot nicer. All right, so that was our first technique is the slaps. That'll give you enough to practice on its own. The second technique to go over in this video is bass note only. So this one's typically applied to the first beat of your strumming pattern. And again, you can use this one on any strumming pattern that you know right now. Just add it up and it'll make a lot more interesting. But what this is, is instead of playing the entire chord, all you're gonna do is play just the lowest note in the chord. So for a G, that's gonna be the sixth string. So if you're gonna do a Then all you gotta do is on the first beat, add in just the single note. And you can see just right that, it makes it more interesting because you're doing something a little bit different. So you can apply that to any chord progression and just add in these bass notes to add another dimension to your strumming pattern. And right there, you kind of get this bass line coming in with your chords. So you're kind of playing a bass guitar and a rhythm guitar at the same time. So like your slaps, this can be added anywhere in your strumming pattern. It'll sound cool, but more often than not, we're going to play it on the first beat. And if you want to add it in again, you can play it on the third beat. Those two are just going to naturally sound nice when you add them in. So any strumming pattern you're playing, you can replace the first chord with just the bass note of that chord and it'll instantly be a lot more interesting. Now one big note on this one is sometimes when you're strumming away at this hand, it's pretty hard to accurately hit just a single string, but it's not too important. If you hit the first two, it'll still kind of get the same effect of that low bassy sound and then you continue on. So try and hit just that low note if you can, but if you do play two, it's not that important. It's still gonna get the same desired effect and still gonna sound a lot more interesting than just the same straight old chords. All right, so let's try out a simple example with this. I'm gonna keep the strumming pattern simple so that you can focus on getting your bass notes. When you're doing this, start by looking straight down at your right hand, at your strumming hand, and then looking at the strings that you're trying to pick. It's gonna make it a lot easier to be accurate. Over time, you can stop looking, but for now, just focus straight on this strumming hand and hopefully your chords can keep up. So it's gonna sound like this. So all I'm doing right there is switching between three different chords. I'm playing bass, up, up, bass, up, up. So the chords I'm switching between here are gonna be G, the four finger version, and then this C add nine, which is the exact same thing, just the first and second finger shifted down a string. And then to this D sus four, which is the exact same thing with these fingers, just this move to the second fret of the third string. G, C add nine, 
DCS4. This keeps your chords pretty simple. And then all we're gonna do here is play the bass note, up, up, bass note, up, up. The bass note changes from the sixth string to the fifth string to the fourth string. So nice and slowly. There you go. So you can practice that and it sounds pretty nice once you get it smooth. Now what you're probably going to notice is it's pretty hard to pick this accurately at first, but just practice it for a few days. Within a week from now, if you practice this every day, it'll be pretty smooth and you've got a new technique that you can use in any strumming pattern. The key takeaway here is that you can apply this bass note pattern to any strumming pattern that you're currently playing. So anything you're working on from any song, you can just plop that in, replace it, and it's instantly going to make it more interesting. All right, so on that, I'm gonna leave you with those two techniques for this video, because I'm sure that's plenty to practice right now. Uh, I'm sure when you're just starting out these, they're gonna be pretty difficult, and it's gonna take you a while to get the hang of, but they are very worthwhile to learn because they're really versatile, and you can see how you can throw both of these techniques into absolutely any strumming pattern, just to change it up to become more creative. And this is a cool thing because it'll start to show you all the different possibilities that you might not have known existed with your strumming patterns on how to make them more interesting and escape that beginner strumming pattern trap. So this is part two of my four part series on strumming patterns. In the next video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different really cool strumming patterns that again, make things more interesting. These techniques in the next video are gonna be easier than these ones. So you'll definitely wanna check that one out. It's coming out next week. If you're watching this video more than a week after publish, then the link will be in the description of this video. Go watch that series and I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't so you get notified when I post. Please thumbs up if you like this video and say hi in the comments below. I'll see you with the next video.